Seth. Seth, wake up, Seth. <sighs> what the f- Did you think you could escape us? Oh, no, 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 it can't be. You thought you could just rebrand yourself to get away from us, didn't you? No, no, I, I, I didn't want to get away from you, I just wanted to shake things up. Liar, you wanted to be done with Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. But you're not. You never will be done with Mystery Dungeon. You owe us your life. You owe us your channel. Okay, okay, just... What do you want from me? We want you... To make a video about us. Wait, what? Yeah, we miss you and your channel. Oh, okay. Well... Any game in particular? Nah, your choice. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, as you could probably guess from the title, is a spin-off series of the wildly popular Pokemon franchise. While the mainline Pokemon games are beloved in their own right, being traditional top-down RPGs where you play as a human and collect a ton of neat little monster thingies, forcing them to battle one another to the death over and over again, that formula's kind of gotten stale for a lot of Pokemon fans over the years. Pokemon games often have very bare-bones stories, and while running around, exploring worlds, and catching Pokemon is exciting for the first few times, without some form of story keeping players intrigued, it really sets in just how repetitive the mainline games can get. But I don't want to be bored. I want Pokemon to make me cry! Okay, not like that. After three generations of Pokemon games, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and Red and Blue Rescue Team were released to remedy this on the Game Boy Advance and DS respectively. These games started with one core concept. What if you, as a player, were a Pokemon? Chunsoft took that core concept and ran with it as far as they could, making you as a player not just any random Pokemon, but specifically a human that was turned into a Pokemon with no idea why. While the main goal of most Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games is answering the mystery of why you've turned into a Pokemon, through the process of doing so, you connect with all the other Pokemon characters around you. You understand their stories, you form deep personal relationships, you journey with them on quests to save the entire Pokemon world from meteorites, the end of time, the universe's deletion, a black hole, I think? Look, I still have no idea what Dark Matter's supposed to be. And, at the end of it all, saving the world usually comes at a great cost, with the player characters sacrificing themselves, and their partner Pokemon crying over the loss of their friend. In most games, it's legitimately heartbreaking, and it's still kind of hard to believe that Chunsoft took the cute, lovable animal monster thingies from the Pokemon series and made you care about them through such stories. On top of that, it fused these stories with the gameplay of the Mystery Dungeon franchise, which admittedly had been popular in Japan since Torneco's Great Adventure and Shimer and the Wanderer released on the SNES back in the 1990s, which breathed a phenomenal breath of fresh air to the hearts and souls of many Pokemon fans. So much so that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon explores a time darkness and sky, the second generation of games in the spin-off series, is considered by many Pokemon fans to be the best Pokemon game overall. So, with the series being so widely popular for its story, emotional character connections, and portability having been put exclusively on handheld consoles, what do you think would make the most sense for the Pokemon Company to do with the series? So, you have a new Mystery Dungeon game pitch for me? Yes sir, I do. I was thinking, what if we made a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game with no story, mm -hmm. no notable characters of any kind, Go on. And we released it exclusively in Japan on the Wii. Well, making games that completely remove everything that fans love from a series and making it exclusive so most of them won't be able to play it anyways. Tight! Yeah, this is embarrassing. Seeking to cash in on the popularity of the Wii, the Pokemon Company and Chunsoft created three new WiiWare Mystery Dungeon games called Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Let's Go Tempest Adventure Squad, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Go For It Radiant Adventure Squad, and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Keep Going Wildfire Adventure Squad. I feel like I just threw up! I say that's what they were called, but again, these games were exclusive to Japan, meaning they never got officially translated or localized overseas, so their official titles were... these. Honestly, even not knowing Japanese, these titles still look way too long. Because of the exclusive nature of these games, I definitely feel comfortable saying that the vast majority of people who will ever view this video likely haven't played them. The Adventure Squad games are incredibly unique to say the least, and while there is thankfully a full-fledged English fan translation patch out there, link in the description, it's still very difficult to actually get your hands on a copy of the game itself. Adventure Squad is kind of like the Mother 3 of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. It was only ever accessible through an online service that got shut down in 2019, in a language inaccessible to most of the planet, and has never gotten remade, re-released, or officially localized to remedy that. However, one big difference between PMD Adventure Squad and Mother 3 is that, well... This game blows! Yeah, I got my hands on a translated copy of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, go for it, Radiant Adventure Squad, and played it all the way through. 
Something that was incredibly tricky to do, not only on the account that it's just really hard to get a copy of the game translated and modded into my Wii U, but also because the game is hard. First and foremost are the controls. Technically, there are four control schemes. You're allowed to play with a Wii Classic controller, a GameCube controller, or even a Nintendo DS via Bluetooth if you want a familiar control layout. But the game told me to play with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and I'm nothing if not an avid rule follower. This control scheme stinks, and I don't think it'd be hard to see why, even if you don't have a chance to try it out yourself. You use the Nunchuck or D-pad to move, which does make sense, and you press A to do a basic attack. And those are the only things that actually make sense. The nunchuck itself is a too bad, you press Z to lock your movement to diagonals and C to look in a specific direction. That's not too bad, it just uh, took a little bit to get used to. However, the Wii Remote is an absolute mess. In order to open the general menu, something you do a lot and was intuitively on the X button for the DS games, you have to press the minus button on the Wii Remote. Not the plus button, that would make sense. Instead, the plus button turns everything on screen black, except for the map. To use your set move, you press both B and A at the same time, which was the button combination of previous games meant to wait a turn, so I would often find myself just using a move when I meant to wait. Instead, to wait a turn, you have to move your hand down to the bottom of the remotes and press the 2 button. Why? I don't know! On top of all of that, in order to throw a set item, it's the C button on the nunchuck plus the 1 button on the Wii Remote, something you definitely don't want to accidentally do when you intend to just press the 1 button to change the leader of the mission! Oh yeah, I need to talk about that real quick. In PMD Adventure Squad, you're able to change the Pokémon you play as within a mystery dungeon, which, I'm not gonna lie, that's actually a pretty cool mechanic. Being able to take control of any of my allies whenever they're in a bad situation and get them out of that situation instead of relying on the computer to do it for me is pretty dang useful. And since mystery dungeon games don't fail you if your allies faint, only if you as the player faint, if you notice that the Pokémon you're currently controlling is low on HP and in a bad situation, you just swap to a different Pokémon, let the one you previously played as faint, and move on as if it's no big deal. This technically is a mechanic that was implemented in every Pokémon Mystery Dungeon game after Adventure Squad. You could only change leaders in dungeons after beating the main story, which I think is a pretty solid decision because in order to allow you to swap characters throughout the whole game in Adventure Squad, they had to sacrifice a lot when it comes to the story. And when I say a lot, I mean pretty much the entire story. In Adventure Squad, there technically is a story, but it's incredibly bare bones. Unlike every other PMD game, you aren't a human that got transformed into a Pokémon. In fact, you aren't even in the game. Your Adventure Squad is just a group of nine Pokémon that just volunteer to rescue a Shuckle that goes missing. The nine you have access to are different based on the version you play. For Wildfire, you have access to red and brown Pokémon. For Tempest, they're all blue. And for Radiant, they're all either yellow or electric type, which I think is how they got away with including Shinx and Pachirisu. Since I played Radiant Adventure Squad, I selected Mareep and Togepi to rescue Shuckle, thinking that they would be this game's equivalent of me and my partner in all the other games. However, that's not what happened. Nobody in your Adventure Squad ever talks, in fact, the main voice of the game is Slowpoke, the town elder, who just tells you what to do. Additionally, while you have to select two of the nine Pokémon for your first adventure, the remaining seven are still part of your team, and you can just swap to them whenever you want. There's literally zero commitment to the two Pokémon you initially pick. And honestly, if you play the game straight through as intended, you're almost encouraged to abandon the two Pokémon you started out as because you wind up recruiting Pokémon that are significantly higher in level than you. But returning to what little story the game has, once you rescue Shuckle, you find out that he got lost searching for some delicious food. Shuckle, dude, just learn to cook. It's far less dangerous. Eventually, Farfetch shows up and tells the town about some amazing chocolate, which Shuckle begs the team to go get. So you do, you bring it back to town, and everyone goes nuts trying to eat the chocolate and hoard it to themselves. So, in order to bring everything back to normal and make everyone stop fighting, your team goes out in an effort to find compassion cookies. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The moment you get back with the compassion cookies, everyone shares the cookies and things go back to normal. It was that easy. From now on, whenever people say that Gates to Infinity talks down to their audience and treats them like children, I'm just gonna show them this game. Straight up, I am convinced that this game's plot was solely a ploy to teach kids that sharing is good, being greedy is bad. It's embarrassing that such a bland and basic message is in a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game instead of Veggie Tales. That's basically what this game is. Pokemon Veggie Tales. Look, you even look like a vegetable. However, one tiny advantage about this lack of a story is that it really doesn't seem to care about the canon of the more well-known Mystery Dungeon games. Yeah, it sucks that a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game has basically a non-existent story, but even I have to admit, it's kind of funny when you're able to recruit Pokemon that were NPCs in other games like Drowsy and get hilarious missions like this one where Grovile seems helpless. I'm not helpless. Oh, shut up. You asked me to do this. Fine. 
moving on from the story, I do want to talk about gameplay a bit, because while on the surface it's got fairly normal Mystery Dungeon gameplay, there are some differences that make this a fairly unique game, even outside of its exclusive circumstances. I mentioned earlier that you will often encounter Pokémon in dungeons that are significantly higher level than you, and that is true. At least in my experience, some of the dungeons were hard as balls, and I struggled to get through them for hours. A large part of that is that enemy Pokémon could evolve, which it's kind of cool. Yo, look, it's, it, it's Grovile. Until you realize the most evolved Pokemon can one-shot your entire team and evolve again. Thankfully, this game does give you a neat way to get around the higher level Pokemon. Something entirely unique to the WiiWare titles, a stack attack. All hail the totem pole. Occasionally in dungeons, you'll come across these little holes in the ground, and when you do, you can stack your Pokemon on top of one another. The order in which you're allowed to do so is based on each Pokemon's size, and you can stack two, three, or even four Pokemon in a row. Doing so comes with a lot of advantages, as a Pokemon stack counts as a single Pokemon in some ways and separate Pokemon in others. For instance, the HP of all Pokemon in a stack get combined, so if you have four Pokemon with 50 HP in a stack, suddenly you have an absolute monster with 200 HP. Plus, during combat you have control over the attacks used by each Pokemon in the stack, so you can manually choose the optimal attacks and unleash them in exactly how you see fit. Also, also, whenever you do attack, even though all the Pokémon in the stack do different attacks, only the bottom Pokémon's power points, or PP, is decreased. So if you have a really strong move with a low amount of PP, you don't have to worry about it running out as long as the Pokémon with that move isn't on the bottom. Obviously, this means that in an optimal Pokémon relationship, bottoms need to have a large PP, and the size of the top's PP doesn't really matter. Wait a minute. However, stacking does come with some pretty big downsides, too. Most notably being that the HP of your stack doesn't recover over time like it does when your Pokémon are unstacked. Not to mention the caveat that if your bottom Pokémon is unable to attack, say by being paralyzed or some other status effect, your entire stack can't attack. Also, 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 your team isn't the only one that can stack. Other wild Pokémon will often be encountered in stacks of their own, and while you can knock down stacks by throwing any item at them, they can just reform the stack with no problem. No need to use a stacking hole or anything. Honestly, this stacking mechanic is really cool, and I just wish they put it in another Mystery Dungeon game. It's kind of a shame. This game has some really solid gameplay mechanics that, were they in a better game, I would have loved. Stacking, changing leaders, and... Oh shoot, I forgot to talk about version differences. Version differences! Yeah, I think PMD Adventure Squad does one thing better than any of the PMD games before it. Arguably better than any Pokemon game, too. Each game individually has 15 dungeons only seven of which can be explored before completing the story. Uh, the other eight are only accessible in the post-game, which I did not have the energy or motivation to play through. But each of these 15 dungeons are entirely different across the three versions of the game. They all have similar naming practices and the levels of enemy Pokémon in each of them are similar across the games, but the tile sets and the Pokémon encountered in each dungeon across the games are, are completely different. Plus, the hub world for each game has a fairly different vibe, despite using the same music and having the same overall layout. This alone isn't too cool, but when you add in the fact that if you have multiple versions installed on your Wii, your save file counts toward all three of them. This means that you can visit and recruit Pokémon from a total of 45 different dungeons just by buying the game three times instead of once. Which, yeah, that's pretty cool, especially since pretty much every Pokémon is exclusive to one version. I know a lot of people hate it when Pokémon games come as dual or triple releases because you have to buy multiple games or trade with someone who has the other games to get the version-exclusive Pokémon, but that's kind of a fundamental part of the mainline Pokémon series that's been missing from the Pokémon Mystery Dungeon series, and it's kind of nice to see it included here. Plus, at least this gives the series a reason to have multiple versions, instead of Explorers of Time and Darkness, which really only had like six version-exclusive Pokémon each. At least Adventure Squad kind of justifies having three different versions. And at 1.2 thousand Wii points each, which is 1.2 thousand yen or 12 dollars here in the States, it really wouldn't have been too much of a financial burden to get all three versions, unlike the $120 you would need to spend in order to get both copies of a modern mainline Pokémon game. I just wish Adventure Squad was a good game at its core. The Japanese exclusive WiiWare Pokémon Mystery Dungeon games have a fair amount of cool mechanics that I would love to see in a better game. Eh, who knows? Maybe one of the fan-made ROM hacks that the Sky Temple community has been making a ton of recently will be able to implement all of these mechanics in a way that makes sense while also having a phenomenal story like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games were meant to have. And I believe that should meet my Mystery Dungeon quota for, well, for a while. Right, Grovile? That was... satisfactory. I see why you like this new style of content. But we Mystery Dungeon fans need more! 
Therefore, I command you to make a video like this covering something Mystery Dungeon related every week. <laughs> Stop! Wait a minute, the video's not over yet, I've still got more to say. First and foremost, I want to give thanks to Minish May for appearing in this video as the voice of Grovile, which is normally on my plush pile back there. Uh, not anymore. Grovile's been naughty. If you don't know who Minish May is, she's a fellow YouTuber, a good friend of mine, and a big fan of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. In fact, she also did a playthrough of the Mystery Dungeon Sky Randomizer, so if you're interested in that, go check her out. Secondly, I want to go ahead and call your attention to something new on this channel that I'm doing, channel memberships. In case you hadn't noticed, these new video essay style videos take a lot longer to produce than some of the gameplay videos I used to make, which is great, I really enjoy their output, but as a result that does mean that I'm not able to get as many of them out as I'd like to, and a large part of that is because time is money and I don't have a whole lot of the latter. If you want to help support the channel, you know, liking, subscribing, sharing the video, that helps a lot, but if you want to support a bit more directly, you can sign up for a channel membership. Basically, channel memberships are YouTube's version of a Twitch subscription, where you can choose to toss a couple dollars my way every month or so in exchange for some neat rewards here on YouTube. I've got cool little icons to go by your name, I've got stickers that you can use in your comments, and I'm going to start putting shoutouts of every channel member at the end of each video, and since I have one right now, and only one, hi Blum! Blum's name goes here. Also, also, if you become a channel member, you can get some exclusive behind-the-scenes peeks at what I do. Most of them are going to be bloopers, but something specific for this video is that I am posting my entire long play of this Radiance Adventure Squad right here on YouTube, exclusive for channel members. It's about seven and a half hours of uncommentated gameplay footage of a game you've probably never played. It honestly really isn't interesting. But if this video made you curious at all and you want to give it a see, Toss a few dollars my way, you're welcome to see it. Or, I mean, other people have played through it as well. You're welcome to look up theirs. Really, I just wanted to let you know that this opportunity for you to help support the channel exists. And if you want to, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you don't want to, or you can't afford to, no shame there. Nothing wrong with that. But I don't want you to feel obligated to give me money. Lord knows money is hard to come by these days. We're, we're all struggling. And all right, that is the end of the video. I have nothing else to say. Maybe I should just... Cut to the clip of me throwing Grove out in the trash can again. I don't know how to end this. I'm, I'm sorry, I really don't.